Good afternoon. Today is Sunday, September 6th, 2020, and it's about noon here in Pasadena, California. And here's the update for the last week. So the trading monitors and limits that were installed when we designed uh, all sports market uh, many years ago are still in place. Uh, 24 7 uh, 365 I do occasionally get messages from people asking about messages they receive uh, regarding trading activity uh, please just follow the instructions on the screen it will tell you things like just uh, wait a few minutes or uh, slow down the number of trades these are all the curbs that we put in a number of years ago uh, locks and limits and monitors and that sort of thing so that's what that is um, the ASM formulation, including the quarterly dividends, are not just a functional um, aspect, but they're also a regulatory, meaning that they need to be there, like the quarterly dividends need to be there to pass regulatory muster. So uh, these are not constructions that just came out of nowhere. Uh, this stuff is, um, is calculated and, and also the result of many years of study and discussing strategy matters with our um, consultants and the people that we hired and such in Washington. So that stuff is not going to change. That formulation works. Um, it's been tested many times. And so that's kind of the a little bit more on the foundation there. Um, I'm still doing research on, on sources for um, schedules and scores with an eye towards uh, um, expansion outside of the, the big four leagues and the major world sports so that when the time comes, we don't have to go through this data provider research again. Um, you know, we need to find a robust provider that will accomplish all of the things we need done now and also uh, kind of an eye towards the future. And in the searches just to uh, keep up with scores information and schedule information, I found discrepancies on sites that shouldn't be there, like even misreportings on um, MSN.com, on Yahoo's uh, scores pages, delays in reporting, sometimes things that don't get updated until the next day, which is really su surprising to me because uh, obviously there are millions and millions of users of these sites, but the, the, the information is not kept, uh, is, 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 it, the quality is not there. And I don't know if that's uh, some of the same things we're experiencing with restarting after COVID-19 or, or what, but um, until I can find a stable data provider um, then, then we're just going to keep doing this manually and, and until that time comes because uh, it's a real mess when the information uh, is wrong and the system is uh, activated to close games. Uh, it just creates a lot of extra work uh, to reverse those transactions and such. So we really need to get quality uh, data provider before we even think about um, automating this process again. And it's become more difficult than I expected to find a new provider. This is, uh, uh, I think you're going to find this interesting. This is definitely not a now thing. It's not even something that's going to be done while I'm around. But Alper seems to believe, and we were talking about tennis specifically, he thinks there may be a way to come up with a player-based configuration for ASM. Um, I have long been opposed to that uh, for a lot of different reasons. I, I think it's very difficult to um, accomplish the regulatory, well, to accomplish the non um corruption aspect of it. Uh, it's just too easy to corrupt a single person's behavior. So I am not willing to take that matter up at all uh, while I'm uh, the director of the company, but I, I told Alper this and the team this uh, just a couple days ago that if he wants to take up the player issue, which of course um, you know significantly expands uh, what we can do and it also uh, puts another threat against any of the player-based models out there like Daily Fantasy and those types of things. But I am not, uh, I, I have public, made public statements going back over a decade that I'm opposed to this because I can't see how to fix that. But Alper says he thinks he may be able to do it. So my response to him last week and the rest of the team was, I'm not touching that, but if you want to take it up uh, when you take over, it's fine. So that's the end of that conversation for now. Um, you know, uh, he, he will bring that up when it's, when it's uh, his company to run. Okay, so um, I want to see a math proof, a mathematical proof that ASM doesn't work or that it's a Ponzi scheme, both, okay? You can't do it because it, it's not the case. Um, conversely, I can prove that it's a valid model and that it's not a Ponzi scheme without any additional funding coming into the dividend reserves from anywhere else externally. 
Again, it's about remitting the money to the teams, not the other way around. I have never, ever, ever, ever said that, very back to the beginning, because there were fights about this back in Costa Rica. Um, it really comes down to people being greedy and short-sighted, and they just want to pump the dividend reserves up because they want bigger payments. There is nothing else going on in that conversation. It is a self-interested comment. Okay, It has nothing to do with anything else. So until I see and can analyze a mathematical proof, mathematical words don't mean anything to me. Show me a mathematical proof that ASM is not a viable financial model and or that it is a Ponzi scheme. I will, in the book that's coming out, the Sports Vote Manifesto, I will prove the, the contrary. So in the meantime, use your time wisely and produce the mathematical proof to battle my mathematical proof on either or both of those two things. You won't be able to do it because it's, it doesn't exist, okay? But you can spin your wheels uh, trying as long as you like. Um, we're not making any changes to the model. Um, it will work just fine uh, as it is, and it will do everything that it was designed to do when we were allowed to do the one job, the one job that we have, which is to prove that it can raise money for a uh, sports league as it was designed in a one-to-one -one cash model all the way through. Okay, That is never happened, and until that happens, we're going to keep marching. Okay, Because when that happens, uh, the model will prove itself out all the way, and everything that we've said over all these years will be shown to be true. So, All right, so um, another comment um, on legal-related matters. So after a lot of research um, over the last two or three weeks, um, the team has come to the conclusion that there's something a bit more nefarious going on with the uh, little gang of uh, little gangster gang of, of Reddit cockroaches. Um, it, it, some of the timing issues um, seem to indicate that there was prior knowledge of the people in that group of the lawsuit being filed by the SEC even before I knew it, because if you look at the filing date of the case and you look at the, the creation date of that forum, it's only separated by about a week. Uh, I don't believe that's a coincidence. And further, there were comments leading up to the day that the lawsuit was filed that uh, or very close to that. I mean, if I remember correctly, it was before before uh, conversations about creating chaos and all this other stuff that happened before I uh, knew the case had been filed. So how is that possible? How, how is it possible that I didn't know and this group of anonymous uh, troublemakers did know? OK. So with that in mind, we're slowing down a little bit on the legal activity because if we can connect the dots here, then it's not just a matter of a bunch of troublemakers trying to, uh, to I don't know, get their extortion claim paid through the SEC. That, that's basically what it looks like, which is not going to work now because of the, the Lou case and among a, a lot of other reasons, but not, that's... The theory as it stands right now is that this was a failed extortion slash, um, you know, um, extortion racket slash whistleblower claim that failed. And that's and, and there's and, in, and because they still aren't getting paid, I guess, they're just continuing to vomit out trash and lies. So that makes for a claim of of damages way beyond what I was looking at before. Because if we can show that this was a conspiracy to harm ASM that started about a year ago and has put us in a situation where it's very difficult for us to, uh, to achieve what we're after during probably, I would say, our biggest market opportunity of our entire development, this COVID-19 situation, then there's a counterclaim case not only against the SEC, but against the individuals responsible. Okay, so we're going to dig. We've got all that information. We've, we've pulled it all that stuff down and are sifting through it. And there's some stuff coming out of that that is seems to indicate that this was an intentional, an intentional attempt to harm ASM and its stockholders. And if we can connect all these dots very, very close on a couple points, if we can connect all these dots, then all of this is going to be put together and turned into a claim, and there's going to be hell to pay for the people who were behind this.
So we have been a nonprofit from 2011. That's when the incorporation papers were filed. There's no way to make another claim that you were tricked out of anything. The 2008 market failed in that crash. The reconstitution of ASM, there is no connection there between those two. We had to start it up all over again. And everything about it being experimental, everything about the donation structure, all of that stuff has been public from even before the launch of the learning market. That stuff was public. That stuff was public before. Uh, it was public when we had the learning market going and then the pilot market came on. So there is no way to make the claim that, that the information about the construction of ASM was on the nonprofit and all that stuff. So all of this is going to fall down like a, a house of cards. And then we're going to dig through those cards and we're going to hold the individuals behind this accountable for what they've done. Because after 15 years of solid work and the last 10 have been extremely difficult and we're in our moment of opportunity where we should be able to find just one order. That's all we need is just one order. And that is being made difficult by an aggressive and continuing effort, yeah, that's a conspiracy case. So, and extortion is making demands on people for things that you have absolutely no legal claim to and there's no basis in law and saying that you're going to continue to do it until you're paid. That is extortion, okay? So, there's a civil case there, and if you push it, there's a criminal case, okay? So, watch it. You're playing with fire. Okay, so I received a LinkedIn invitation request from the Zoom CEO. Uh, this is uh, not, it's not unusual to receive high level uh, requests these days, but this is certainly the, the, uh, the highest level one that I've received so far. I would say it's a combination of things, but it's I, definitely the Hero Club efforts over the last two years and the travels have contributed to this because of, of the network building that's going on. So I now have uh, more than 2,000 connections. I think it's 2,025 today. Uh, this is going to pay off when it's time to pay off because I can reach out and talk to these people directly. I can write the Zoom CEO a message right now if I want to. Um, remember also that he's connected to, to Hero Club president uh, Jeffrey Hazlett. So, um, but it's not time for that just yet. Uh, it's you know we have work to do on our side here uh, again to get the uh, first order in the tank is really what we need here. So um, Chad is building out the NewSportsEconomy.org uh, website. So that's just kind of updating it with uh, time its timelines and. Uh, it's a more user-friendly version of NewSportsEconomy.com, updated with all the things that have happened in the last few years, and uh, a little bit easier to read, basically a little bit easier to read version of that. This is just kind of a fun thing. Rearrange your desk and uh, make your bed every day. Okay, so rearranging your desk uh, is kind of like getting a new job uh, without having to get a new job. It's uh, it's kind of fun, and it will help your pro. At least it... It has mine, and it's. Uh, I'm not the only person who said this, so uh, give it a try. And always make your bed uh, when you wake up. It may sound silly and stupid, but uh, this is actually a topic of a book title. But it is. Uh, it's. It sets the stage for how you approach your day, and it may seem like a, a silly, stupid, nothing thing, but it's really not. Uh, the credit union model. A little more credit clarification on that. So, uh, looking at governance models for the business side of ASM. So you have the, the nonprofit side, which is where we are now, that will continue on to function for the educational side of the mission. The for-profit side, uh, B Corp, um, Alper's on board with that. This I think is a little bit, it's, it's pretty much more of the same, but I think rather than, we always talk about using a bank stock market model, I would just like to amend that to say credit union stock market model. And I would say credit union new stock market model, okay? Credit union, new stock market model. Amazon drivers hanging uh, cell phones in trees to try to get uh, driving jobs, uh, basically competing with each other. This is, um, this is a much bigger story than just people hanging phones in trees. I don't want to get into it here, but it's, it's, it, the first word that came to mind when I saw this was desperation, uh, and it's, it's, it's sad, really. Um, so anyhow, uh, I don't want to get any, you know, go any further than that. But 
it's it's really amazing. Get, read the story. Uh, just Google that story, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, so, um, in the search for simple terms, just try to cook down complex uh, concepts into simple terms. Um, you know, success for an economy, any economy, okay, anywhere in the world, really, I think, comes down to two basic uh, elements. Okay, you need you need uh, internal security, right? People need to feel safe in in the in the land, right? Safe in the land, so to speak, and excitement, right? So when you have excitement and people feel safe, both, then you have uh, commerce. People are not afraid to spend money. They they that is the the core um, conditions that need to be present to have a successful economy everywhere. So again, I believe that ASM you know will create. I mean, the sports creates the excitement. The excitement will be monetized and turn into financial security. So that's that. Uh, three and a half years. So when I was in Texas uh, fighting for everything, okay, ASM, um, my house, my marriage, which I did, wasn't able to save, everything. Um, I went three and a half years without paying a mortgage payment because of the various moratoriums and trying to get it um, refinanced, which ended up having to end up in the courts because Bank of America wouldn't do, do the modification without being sued, uh, which is why most people lost their houses because they wouldn't have done what I did or wouldn't know how or couldn't certainly couldn't hire somebody to do it. So um, I had no uh, no mortgage payment and I rode a bike for most of that time um, back then and in Texas that's a bit more of a problem because things are not exactly squashed together like they are here. But if I wouldn't have done that um, because the money that it wasn't paid on a mortgage was paid to uh, um, everything else. It was paid to our, what legal fees we had to pay, patent and main, patent maintenance fees, um, domain re renewals, every bill that came along uh, just to keep the the absolute last little, you know, the core um, part of the package from falling apart. If I wouldn't have done those things and would have said, no, I'm going to keep the, I'm going to put the money on myself, we there would be no rebirth of ASM in 2015. There would have been none of this would have happened. Uh, 2008 would have been the end of the line, and everybody that invested in ASM and all their accounts and everything would have been gone at the at the 2008 Great Recession. So uh, my repeat of this: uh, I didn't cause COVID-19. I'm not a I'm not in that business. I don't create germs. I had nothing to do with that. I had no no hand in that at all. It was just inflicted on us. Okay. But if I didn't make the changes and continue to make the changes in every aspect of everything necessary to keep this on track, then I would say, I mean, I don't think the threat level is there now that it was, but six months ago, that would have been it. That would have been the end of the line, okay? Uh, you know, it's wiped out 200, this, this situation has wiped out co companies that are 200 years old. Give me a break now. That's reality. I mean, there are bankruptcies all over the place and they really haven't even started yet. You wait. The, 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 the running out of the stimulus and the running out of unemployment benefits, you're going to see a mountain of these things come crashing in here in the coming months. So uh, I don't have any shame about that. I, I'm doing it to, to keep the project from falling apart and to continue to advance it and continue to bring it to fruition like I promised that I would do. I, I didn't promise to... Uh, pr that I would succeed. You can't promise that. I just said that I would promise every, I would uncover every rock. I would, I would do everything humanly possible to bring it to a successful conclusion. And I'm still doing that in spite of every circumstance that's thrown at me and the rest of the team. So I, I have no, no, no negative. I'm doing what it takes and that's what I've had to do. And that's what I'm still doing. So, um, on DraftKings and, and Michael Jordan now on, let me start with, I can separate out my feelings towards something to analyze it from a business perspective. If I thought this was a good idea, I would say it's a good idea. We talked about Michael Jordan for ASM many years ago. And even when I talked to the team about it, um, because in, in Costa Rica, I talked to Bernie about, well, when we were in Costa Rica, 
times that I spent with Bernie, I talked about Michael Jordan a couple times because I may be wrong. I'm pretty sure he told me once or twice they played golf together or maybe more than that. I don't know. Maybe more since since then. But the point is, Michael Jordan is a huge gambler, like, and not just a gambler, a problem gambler. Okay, there there are. This is not Chris saying this. This is known to the world. Okay, so what you really have with Michael Jordan is you have the biggest problem gambler in the world. Okay, who joins the advisor? That's just a throwaway line. All all that is is just to allow them to use him in the press uh, mentions. Okay, so. Uh, it should have been a massively positive event, but if you look at the stock activity, and I thought about it, and I'm like, sounds great, but then is it really uh, a massively positive thing that you have the world's biggest problem gambler as your flagship guy? And and the market kind of got that. It, it went up, and then it, it came flattening down. And even as the market indexes started to rise again, uh, DraftKings kept the pressure kept down. So I don't believe I'm the only one. That, that's not just my conclusion, okay? Because otherwise, you should have seen this as a as a, a, a vertical line, okay? So I do believe that storyline is out there. And I would also say that because Michael Jordan is a sharp gambler, a, a good one, that being part of the ownership team is going to make people wonder, well, is he rigging the odds so that DraftKings makes more money? Because now he got some of that free shares that, you know, the, from the, they gave him a stock grant. That's what they did. And they, in exchange, to use his name. That's exactly what happened here. That's how these things work. So what you have now is uh, he's been paid for his name. Okay. Is it going to be in his interest to improve the profitability of DraftKings. Okay, well, those, what does that mean? That means uh, in the internal operation, remember, we, Ace and I, built sportsbook software. So does that mean he's going to tune it to make more money for DraftKings? These conversations are going to go on in people's minds. So what is his purpose? Is it to remind people to gamble? People know gambling is the existing thing. Okay, this is like... <laughs> To talk about beating gambling to the punch is stupid because gambling has been here for much longer than ASM has been here. We are the insurgent, okay? That's our that's who we are. So they are the de facto default standard, okay? So what is it to remind people to gamble because they don't know about gambling? Give me a break. Everybody knows about gambling. They know, and they, DraftKings made sure everybody got it crammed down their throat with Daily Fantasy, that part of it a few years ago. So is it to convert people to gamblers? Because I don't think it accomplished that. I don't think you're going to create new customers. Uh, I think actually you may lose some customers uh, because of that. If it's to take market share from your other competitors, okay, maybe that's the angle. And that makes sense to me. Maybe you get some new trader. But all you're now doing is you're fighting amongst yourselves, okay? And I said this 15 years ago, roughly, that ASM is a war of attrition. When it counts, what's going to happen? They're not going to care about us, okay? They, they're, they're, that's not, they don't even, we're a fly, not even a fly to them. They don't care, okay? They don't even see it as a threat. But they see each other as threats. So you're now going to see this clashing that goes on between them, okay? That, I see Michael Jordan, I see that as being fighting between Penn and, uh, and all these others, right, between them. So I'm pretty sure that, so maybe, you know, but as far as expanding the market and creating more gamblers, I don't see that happening. I don't see the case for that. Um, gambling is not new or novel by any means. People don't have to be to be reminded. NCAA football confusion. I don't know where that's headed yet. Um, it's only on the learning side of the market. And to what degree it plays or don't pl does not play, then uh, we will cover it according to the rules we've laid down years ago about which teams are listed versus unlisted and all that. Um, the SEC is making a claim that Robinhood, uh, the Robinhood app, is uh, breaking the law. This is really something, or, or doesn't tell the customers how they make profits. I've said this, okay? This is in previous videos and or audios. Robinhood's profit model is selling your orders to other traders. It's called selling the deal flow, okay? So all of a sudden now, there's this giant story about the SEC making a huge claim against them because they didn't tell their customers. Okay, that's their core business. Okay, <laughs> so 
uh, SEC, uh, I would say you have a hand in this somewhere if you gave them permits. So do your job, right? Maybe before they go out and, and screw the markets all up. Um, ASM is the underdog in the fight against gambling, admittedly, okay? But America loves an underdog. The unemployment rate is 18%, 17.8%, give or take. Uh, it's a freaking math problem. Look at all the unemployment claims of all programs ending any ending. I think they completed uh, middle of August. Data divided by the workforce. It's eight. It's seventeen point eight percent and rising on the most recent report. And this is my input. This is not in the data. I would say you can add about five percent for never applied, couldn't uh, qualify, dropped out, or gave up. Okay, so the sportsvote.org has been activated. Um, I take I'm, what I'm doing is I'm reworking the new sportseconomy.com site, which has been up about 10 years now. I think it was put up in the, yeah, I think it's a little over, just barely over 10 years old, right after the um, crash of 2008, nine, it was put up. Uh, so there's a long history there. So rather than rebuilding everything, I'm just adding on to this and, and reskinning it because it's got um, all of our original members are there. So anyway, um, if you had a login there, I've sent out a previous message. Go ahead and retrieve your password. Please do not guess and do not ask me to reset it if you guess. It's an automated process. I can't stop that process. Don't guess. Um, because that website has been up for so long and I don't know if it's actively attacked because of malice or just goofballs or what, but I have to lock it down really hard. I have like a half dozen different security tools on there. And so you must, you must get your password correct. Do not guess at it. It has no, it's, it's turned down to no patience. Okay. <laughs> Basically it has no patience. So get your credentials correct. I've also updated everything for the California privacy laws, GDPR, um, there's going to be a, a store there for campaign gear. That's how we're going to help fund the program. That's we, we're going to have to do that. Just like anything, everything takes money. This is not an exception. Um, make it as efficient as possible, but we're going to put a store up um, and I'm working on that. So anyway, you can chat freely. I'm not going to go in there and, and, and shut people down. I do not want to see people uh, talking, you know, no, 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 keep the profanity out of there. I'm just as bad. I have to learn to stop doing that. Don't, no insulting people, no bullshit. <laughs> there goes the profanity thing. Look, conversation between decent, civilized people. You can even ask hard questions, okay? I'm hiding from nothing, okay? So you can direct them to me. I'll answer them publicly. That That is a, a complaint by this bunch of Reddit scumbags that there was no way to talk to each other. That's actually false. There is a Reddit forum, but nobody talks over there because they, they don't want to talk about the everything. They just want to slam. Okay. So I'm, I can't have it on the ASM notice board because eventually that's going to have to be cleaned up totally and look like, um, the, the New York stock exchange or NASDAQ. We can't have that kind of conversation and stuff going on, on the exchange mechanism. But having a place for people to talk externally is fine. So there is a Reddit forum that was set up with uh, the team members, but but the people who want to try to screw us up, and frankly, who I think were part of a plot to do it through the SEC and screw us up, they don't want to do that. What they want to do is they want to just do the negative side, and they want to do whatever they can to harm the efforts. Okay, So I'm taking this reasoning away. You're free to come here and talk about whatever you want as long as you're decent. Okay, that's all that's required. And you can ask whatever you like about whatever you like, and I'll answer it or do the same with others. But, and conversation is good, and that's fine. But we're not going to turn this into a dumpster fire like the rest of everything in this country right now. That's not going to happen on my ground that I'm standing on. It's not going to happen. Okay, I'm not going to allow it. So if you want to have a conversation like a decent person, you're free to join. And I'm not going to play games with, with, with removing people's comments and all that stuff. Okay. And again, hard questions are fine. And on that site, so the new sport, so here's the, the, there's three parts. Newsportseconomy.com goes to the, uh, 
uh, I'm sorry, the sportsvote.com goes to the YouTube channel. That's primary. Okay, we want to focus things on video. The new sports economy, I'm sorry, the sportsvote.net. Okay, so the .net extension is the petition. Please pass that around. It is important. We are adding people faster than normal. I would, nor I would usually get 25, I'm sorry, two, three people each time I send it out. Now it's getting 25, 30 people each time. So this is important. So please participate, post it, um, post it on your social media. Keep reposting it and resharing it. Uh, we need it to get some momentum on its own, and it's not there yet. Uh, it's, it's not there yet. It's getting close. Um, so, and then the, finally, the, the sportsvote.org, which actually redirects to the new uh, reconfigure new sports economy.com. That's going to continue to have new tools. It's, I'm going to keep adding things that I think will be helpful to do the one thing we need to do. Remember, it comes down to one thing. We need to find or create, and Alper's, again, working on this with Clipper. Um, we need to find uh, the idea of a, uh, a celebrity league here in L.A. He's working on that with Clipper, Daryl. Um, or we need to locate a league to finance publicly. That is the job. So all the tools on um, the sportsvote.org, okay? So, again, sportsvote.com video, sportsvote.net petition, sportsvote.org is the uh, is the discussion and the and the repository of everything and the tool set okay so that's the three pieces um, everything driving to get order number one okay and lots of puff pieces coming out about how gambling is doing so great and it's all this pent-up demand yeah that's a bunch of baloney okay MGM just fired almost 20,000 people that were pre MGM in Vegas almost 20,000 people that were previously furloughed. So if everything was going so great, why do you lay off uh, the population of uh, almost a, that's a pretty good sized town. You know, I mean, 20,000 people is a pretty good sized town. So 20,000 people fired, gambling's doing great. Sure, sell that somewhere else. DraftKings loses more money faster every quarter. So yeah, everything's going great. It's just not true, okay? And the quarter, I, there's not one positive number out there, so it's all just lies, like all the rest of the crap out there. Um, and then we have some of the, the haters uh, that signed the sportsvote.net petition. <laughs> they, their public signatures on that petition are available for you to look at, and they're over slamming us on this lies and, and hate speech website. What is that? I mean, senseless. Um, COVID-19 is not over, okay? COVID-19 is not over, okay? Not by any means at all, okay? I have friends in the medical field in, in, on the ground here, and I have friends in the medical field in policy in Washington. It is not over by any stretch. And then finally, um, I'd like to offer this, this up. And this, this may make some people mad, but I don't really care anymore. I'm past all that. I would say Black Lives Matter injustice and ASM injustice are, are not far off. Um, and why do I say that? Because if you examine all of the work that we've done, I would say that the only thing that was missing from it is that we didn't spend a few million dollars more on the right lawyer letterheads. Okay, let that sink in. Thank you very much for your time. Um, I will be back with the next week's report on next Sunday. Stay safe with your family and friends. This too will pass. Bye now.